if you're leading a district, it is 100% your job. If you were leading um, an army, if you are the CEO of a company, if you're the mama at a home with a bunch of kids you're raising, <laughs> it is your job to keep morale high because without morale, without relationships and engagement, you don't have anything. Welcome, everybody, back to another exciting episode of the Undisrupted Podcast. Adam, let me ask you a question because I've always been, I always wondered this, and I've had administrators over the years tell me that this is possible, but can learning actually be fun? Well, of course it can be, Carl. I mean, that's that's my tagline now. I think in my Twitter handle or something or one of my bios or whatever. It's, if you're having fun teaching it, then your students are having fun learning it. That you you have to enjoy what you're doing and then other people will enjoy it as well. So it has to be fun, especially when you look at where we are today and what we have to compete with. And this, we're in a society right now where we're trying to make minute rice in 30 seconds. So it's really that mentality of kids, can you keep their attention before you, you lose their interest? You know, my kids don't know about commercials. You know, they get mad when they're watching YouTube and, and an ad pops up. They'll like skip it and go to another video. They won't even watch through the little ad. So we have to keep their attention. We have to make it fun. It has to be engaging and you have to have those quick transitions um, into something else. Otherwise you're going to lose them. You're going to become bored. Technology is not going to help. So it's it's only going to amplify what you have with the technology. It's going to amplify your excitement. It's going to amplify your fun, or it's going to make it more boring in your classroom. If you stink as a teacher, you're going to have a really stinky classroom. You know, what say you, Mr. (laughs) Hooker? I say that I agree, but I, and I'm thinking about this on a professional level, with professional development or professional learning, because I used to run an event called iPad Palooza. Some of you may know out there listening. And uh, plug. One, yes, <laughs> plug or Learn Fest as it became later on. What was interesting was at one point I had a principal tell me, like, uh, we have to do these so many mandatory trainings and staff get this many extra days off based on the training they take in the summer. And they didn't want to give them any credit for going to my event. And a principal said, well, it's because your event's fun and they're going to want to go to that. And I said, well, there's your, think about what you just said. I mean, you're not going to give them credit because they're going to something that's fun and engaging. And the stuff that you're making them go to by default is not fun and engaging. So there's a problem there. But uh, I'm going to invite on the show a couple of ladies that know how to make professional learning fun and engaging. Uh, Jennifer Crook is the Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum Instruction and Assessment at China Spring ISD. You can follow her at JD Crook on the Twitters. Melissa Adams is the Director of Innovation and Instructional Technology at China Spring ISD. You can follow her at Melissa La 5. Melissa LA 5, that is. <laughs> Ladies, welcome to the show. Hello. Hello there. What do you think? Uh, can it be fun? Because I know you guys have a little something cooked up your sleeve that you do every year, too, that makes uh, learning fun. You want to tell us a little bit about Destination PD? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I think. Uh, it's can you do it at the same time? That would be <laughs> yeah, awesome. Yeah, can you practice that? <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> it's so funny because um, one of the things that we have written about is the F word in education, right? Because Ooh. we all know we're not allowed to say the F word correct? Fail. And I know what F word you think I'm thinking, <laughs> but it's really not. It's the fun word. And I feel like I go back to when I was first training Harry Wong, no fun, fun, fun. And I'm a huge Wong fan. But I think for a lot of us that was drilled into our heads that it can't be fun. And I think that's why you got that response for the principal, which is why we want to bring the fun. And that's a lot what we do with Destination PD. What is it? She does the other F word. Function. function. Fun, how fun does it function and, function. and uh, how do you take fun and function and make it work into the classroom? And if you're not having fun, the kids aren't learning. I agree completely. So they're Des- checked out. Destination PD is was is based on that, based on the fact that teachers shouldn't have to sit through the suck. They should be fully engaged because that's what we want in our classrooms. And so, as administrators, as teacher leaders. We expose them to hours and hours of endless things because it can't be fun to get credit, right? And then we get upset with them if they don't do the same in their classroom. So that's what we've tried to do with Destination PD is emulate an experience that they just are so excited about that they want to tell the whole world. And that, you know, that's something that's so important because very often we will do PD or PL or whatever you want to call it in your district that does not mimic what we want them to do. It was right. always my pet peeve years ago when I first started teaching and differentiated instruction was the big thing. 
and all the PD that I went to on differentiated instruction was sit and get. It was a PowerPoint presentation telling right. us how to differentiate, and we never actually did the strategies in the PL. So, you know, if you want to make learning fun, the, your PL, your PD should be fun. It should mimic the strategies and the environment you want teachers to create in their building. So that's 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 so perfect. And you know, I almost look at it as a way to keep your staff morale high because you know it's that whole intrinsic learning that's teacher self-efficacy that we want to really provide and drive in this space. So so let's talk about morale for a second. Everybody's been beat up. You know, we can only talk about how much we've been beat up for so long and people are like, yeah, get over it. I've been beat up too. So tell me how can we keep staff morale high or is it our job to keep it high you know what's whose job is it to keep staff morale high or what can we do if we can do anything to help amplify it if if you're leading a district it is 100 percent your job if you were leading um an army if you are the ceo of a company if you're the mama at a home with a bunch of kids you're raising <laughs> it is your job to keep morale high because without morale without relationships and engagement you don't have anything. And so uh, one of the things that we've worked really hard since, you know, COVID was trying to bring back the things that we value and we value those experiences and those relationships. And so creating time for that to happen in your district, in our district with our culture is one way we've done that. And I do think it's your responsibility to do that. If, and if I feel like if you're a leader and you don't think that's your job, then you probably Maybe you're not in the right place. <laughs> yeah. And I'll flip that on its head and ask this question then. What if you are a, a teacher or someone who is in a, in a place or location where the morale isn't very high? What can you do or what are some tips you may have for a teacher or maybe even a leader who's like, I know that uh, Abner and I both work for lots of different kinds of leaders in our careers. And there's some that are extremely supportive and they and they kind of lift us up. And there's others that maybe not so much, right? A little more micromanaging and kind of want us kind of kind of want to batten you down a little bit. So what kind of tips do you have for that besides, you know, drinking heavily, which I think we would all agree is a great <laughs> tip. Um, <laughs> this is an adult podcast, right? Yes, it is. Yeah, it's fine. And since I'm still employed by a district, might I add that oh, yeah. all of my current Sorry. leaders that I have right now, they are the later. They're 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 the ones who keep our morale high and keep us excited each and every day to work with these wonderful children that we have the privilege uh, to uh, instruct. That message was paid for. The message was paid for by Newton County Code Schools. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Sorry. So yes. Uh, the, the, how do we uh, balance that, ladies? Like what, M Melissa, let me ask you. What, what's okay. an idea or a tip you have? Like uh, if you're feeling like the pressure and you're like, this is not you know, the morale is struggling. What can you do internally for that? Like self care wise, or is there a tip there? Well, I think that when building your PL in and just really like engaging with other instructors and educators across the nation that have your same vision. Um, I think that's going to help boost. I remember, you know, we've been in this district for a long time, but you know, there, there were times where I would, as a teacher, I'd go in and I'd have what I wanted to do and I'd shut my door and I would just go in there and do my thing because maybe that wasn't, maybe the people in the hallway weren't super supportive of what I was doing. You know, maybe the principal was, but everybody else was like, Oh, you're just doing that because you're trying to be extra or something. You just shut your door. You have to try and tune that out and then really try to work with people and listen to people that have your same, your same mindset. Because gotcha. if you're, if you're listening to all the Debbie Downers then you're going to get into that mm -hmm. Debbie Downer. So tune them out and find a group or find somebody or find at least one person that has your same values and, and just immerse yourself in that. So when you when you are in these situations and let's just say I am that teacher and I've been trying, I've been trying, I've been trying to get my team on board. Uh, what what are some words of wisdom or some advice you can give that teacher to try to pull some of those people along? Because, I did, you know, we know at the end of the day, it's all about helping all children. So not just the ones that we have in our room. So how could you how do you think teachers could pull those other teachers along or inspire them to kind of do the right thing? Mm. Well, what do you think about that? I think that you have to. Cattle prod doesn't work. Cattle prod doesn't work. 
one person, I think it goes back to the first follower. You got to find that one first follower. And then once you find that person, then you, then you can get another person and then another person. And, you know, every day I wake up, I'm not always in a great mood, but I just put that pretend face on, on those days that I'm not. And I just go in and I say, this is what we're doing today. And just, you have to really, if you believe it, then other people are going to start believing it. So you just have to fake it till you make it sometimes um, and try to get that one first follower. And then people are like, what are they doing in there? That's so fun. I mean, when we first started teaching, when I first started teaching, Jennifer was already working in the, in the classroom. And we were both teaching third grade and, you know, I'm a brand new teacher and I'm like, what is going on in this girl's class over here? And so I'd go and I'd like look in there and I just keep knocking on the door asking mm-hmm. and she'd like open it and not say anything, shut the door. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's going on in there, but I want to know what she's doing because I want to do that too. So um, I think you, yeah. you just, you keep being you, you keep being excited. You keep trying to do the best you can. And, um, and then you get that first follower. Cause once you do that, then you're just, it's going to, it's going to roll. What do you think? Yeah. I always say, um, uh, you know, my why is stronger than your negativity. So if you are surrounded by negative people, you just remember why you do what you do and keep doing it because you'll you'll find those people. You will. I think we gravitate to each other because we know what our souls are speaking and we find those people that share that same mindset. Yeah. I And I think when you think about that same kind of negativity, teachers right now are really experiencing this in a lot of different ways, you know, with a lot of the political noise and all the other stuff out there. So uh, one of the surveys I saw recently that talked about all the teacher exodus is the number one reason why they're leaving is they don't feel valued. They feel like they don't have the support. They don't feel like, you know, they're, uh, they feel like their job is meaningless in a lot of ways and they're already not getting paid a lot. So um, we can't really affect salary, unfortunately, because we're kind of restricted by certain things in the state um, and, and in the country. So we can hopefully bump it up a little bit. But how do we, uh, as leaders, how do you guys make teachers feel more valued? Is there a way to, is there techniques that you guys use? I know your PD is a big part of that, I feel like, because you actually give them mm-hmm. you know, voice and choice. I've been a part. I've actually, guys, I was in a shark tank. Uh, true story. Yeah, the right. only time I've ever presented in a shark tank in my life was at Destination PD a couple of years ago when they had Jaws Fest, which is a, one of my favorite movies. Um, so uh, all I mean, that to say. A liter- an actual shark tank? Well, with- they made it. A lot of people uh, well, that created by you know, yeah. your income. <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah. I'm just saying, because I know in Texas you do things big. Yeah. I know you do things big in Texas. I'm just checking. I'm just I making mean, sure. I, you- I fit in it. So that was a, definitely a big, <laughs> big shark tank. So how do we make teachers feel more valued, ladies? So we just played a game of Life Size Monopoly in downtown Waco. Uh, full on life size monopoly board, life size characters, put teachers in teams by their choice. As they made their way around, around the board, they had activities to choose at each of the different stations. And, you know, there's a little trickery in there. We know what our target is and we know what they want them to do. But at the end of the day, we want them to have an experience that helps to build relationships and experience that gets them excited about learning. And then also an experience that they can carry over into their classroom. And that goes back to that fun and functional. Um, But then we also reward them. And so we, with their Monopoly money this year, they bought tons of things that our community donated to us at a silent auction. And not just classroom things, but, you know, a $100 gift card to an Italian restaurant up the road. Um, It's Texas, so we had bullets in there as well, you know, just whatever (laughs) the community (laughs) would donate. Whatever they wanted to do, we put in there. Um, I need a three and some more for my 357. I think we're good. Yeah. (laughs) No doubt. Yeah, Texas has a whole different kind of one to one model. (laughs) I think it's our job to create those experiences where they can have some fun because without that, I mean, what, what good is it? You want students to have fun. You've got to have opportunities for them to as well. And we do that with our leadership team also. And I think it goes back to what you were saying too earlier, Adam, where you, as when you were a teacher and you were, you were kind of being talked to at a PD, you were, you were, you know, sitting there and you were kind of getting a sit and get kind of PD and they're saying, and do this thing and do this exciting thing and make teaching fun. And then the teachers are like, well, thanks a lot for like telling me what to do in my classroom and not even taking the time to show me. Mm. Um, so I think that also helps value the the teachers. Like when we're, we're taking the time to put these lessons together, put lesson plans together and teach it to the teachers, how we would want them to teach it. 
So I think they see that we're taking the time mm -hmm. to really see what they're doing. We're doing the we're doing the work that we're asking them to do. So I think when you are willing to do the work that you're asking your your educators to do, then they feel more valued. Well, they understand because they had to build this. They understand yeah. because they saw what how hard this program was or now they see why we were complaining about that. We're putting that work in um, and because we know they're putting that work in and we want, we don't want to ask them to do something that we wouldn't do. Got it. So, so let me ask you this and you, you bring us a really interesting points about, you know, really empowering teachers. And so when I look at our profession, of course, Education is just like everybody else. We're dealing with a shortage, a shortage of, of highly qualified people to fill positions that we have out there. So you do want to build up your people. And I think we all on this call right now have been in the classroom, but you want to build these leaders to hopefully be in our positions one day. But then you also want to build these leaders to actually stay in the classroom. Mm -hmm. So how do you balance those two things with building leaders to hopefully one day sit in our seats and but then also build them to stay in the classroom and do the good work with our students each day? Um, how do you balance those two things? I think you have to support the crazy ideas. Um, I, I had a lot of crazy ideas. I still do. Uh, <laughs> I've. I spent 15 years in the classroom and I was extremely fulfilled the whole time. And it was because I did, um, I did Cougar Idol at the end of every school year, kind of like an American Idol take on that with my classroom. We did a full talent oh, yeah. show. Cougar, oh, Cougar, 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 Cougar. Wait, no, no, I know. I knew that was going to come up. That's our mascot. That's so our just, mascot. Just, it's okay. Just, calm down, Adam. <laughs> just, just, just getting clarity. Just getting clarity here. We it's talked about Adam's OnlyFans account on the last episode. So it's interesting you mentioned that because he has a Knuckles account where he shows up. Uh, yes, people, knuckles. Yeah, people like <laughs> Knuckles, apparently. And then you talk about Cougar <laughs> Idol. We're all thrown off. Yeah, uh, it's yes. all good. Yeah. But I think you have to support those teachers that think differently. You know, and if uh, I, a measurement unit where I used to bring a dog in a day. And if you have teachers out there that want to do different things, we have to support and value that. And then when you have teachers that, have I mean a lot of us are just born we want to lead not for a title because we want to bring others on this amazing journey and you have to give those teachers opportunities to do that uh, one of the ways we have a CILD team here where teachers apply for that team we took the whole team to TCA this year uh, and it's giving them a role to be leaders in a different way but still be classroom teachers and do amazing things things that they would do if they were a campus principal or an AP, but they're still in the classroom because that we know that's the most valued position in our district. Like mm -hmm. without them, we ain't got nothing. Exactly. So you got to give them space to grow and lead and um, not be upset when things fail. You know, you can't always bring five dogs in a classroom. Sometimes it's one dog a day. Yeah. I've learned that. I mean, you got to have limits. I mean, there's got to have limits. <laughs> Okay, quick dog story. Oh, no. <laughs> no, quick dog story. And people don't believe me about this. True story. When I was doing my student teaching, I did my student teaching in Auburn, Alabama. I came in. It was the first day that I was going to be the teacher. My my corporate teacher was stepping back, and he happened to be out that day. So then he told me, hey, it's going to be a sub here. Don't worry. I know you got this, whatever. So I walk into the room ready to be this teacher. It's, I got this. And I see a gentleman sitting at the desk with a dog. And I'm like, oh, OK. Um, I asked him, I said, is this your service animal? He's like, no, I'm blind. This is my seeing eye dog. So I literally had a blind sub my first day of teaching in the classroom with me. Um, and I was it, it was very different. <laughs> Cool, <laughs> yeah, I was like, I mean, oh, wow. Kudos, kudos to him for doing I mean, right. It's, I mean, some could say right. it's the blind leading the blind, but I mean, I'm not going to, no, no, that's a bad, <laughs> can we cut that? That's a bad joke. Um, that's it. I've never heard that's that. Cool. Yes. Yes. I mean, I didn't know that was a thing. And then I realized I was like, okay, this education thing is different, uh, but it, it worked itself out. Uh, it was odd because it was in middle school and if anyone's spent any time with middle school students yeah. know that it doesn't take much to make them have 
a conniption. Um, but you know what? It, we made it through the day. A lot of dogs, the dogs got petted a lot, but you know, we survived it. So I would agree with you. One dog's good. If it was more than one dog in the room, then we could have had some problems there. That went a whole different direction. I thought for, and then I started thinking with the sub shortage nowadays, I mean, we might need service dogs just to be the sub, right? That's it. Just have a, <laughs> an animal that sits there at the front and basically yarp, yarps at anybody that gets out of line. Um, so you said supporting crazy ideas is a big thing, uh, Jennifer. And I'm going to ask you guys both right now. Uh, what is a crazy idea of yours? What's a risk that you want to take that you haven't taken yet? Um, and it could, and, and we'll say professionally, I mean, obviously you could throw, I mean, there's always some personal stuff that's fun to kind of maybe that sometimes we do stuff personally that actually ties into our professional experiences and gives us experiences that we can then share with other teachers and leaders too. So um, I did enough stall there to give you guys a second to think about it. But uh, so both of you have to come up with an answer. What's a risk that you want to take? I, I want to uh, quit my job and go to districts all around the world and bring Destination PD to them. I, I That's all I want to do. Wow. All day long, every day. That's it. 100%. Dude, that sounds like fun. I yeah, know. It is fun. Yes. Yeah. And, and that is really, that's really me too. Because I, I, I one day, I think my name is going to be in lights. That's that's my goal. That's that's. I don't want to. I don't need my just like. Lights. I mean, my bag is packed. Like, I'm ready to go right, right? Okay, I'm not packed. I'm never packed. And I'm going out of town tomorrow. I'll pack five minutes before we leave. Um, That's why you guys get along so well. That really yes, is. Yes, it is. <laughs> because I know that there's a better way. to. We know. We know there's a better way to do professional development. We know there's a better way to, te- to treat teachers. And I want... Melissa to share the function and I want Melissa to share the whole, you know, this is how this translates into the classroom. And I want to share the fun because that's my F word, fun and function. And I think, I do think there's a place for that, especially now there was a place before COVID, but now more than ever, there's a place for it. Uh, it, I want to flood TikTok with positive teacher videos. Teacher TikTok, I want to be positive. I want to see... Have you seen the bingo they've got? Do no, you, I was say, are y'all on the tick? Are you on the talk? Oh, I'm obsessed. So there's a bingo, a, a teacher TikTok bingo, and it's a game that these teachers are playing when they're in their districts PDs. Like every time I hear this word, and it's all oh, of the, the crap we do to oh, teachers at PD. Funny. And I want to shift that narrative and make that a positive where there's not a group of teachers playing bingo across the country because it's the same, you what? know. Now we got to play it real quick though. What, so let's, what are some words, Adam? Give me a, what's a word you hear, a buzzword that you hear at teacher PD? Now, Jennifer knows the answers a little bit because she's done the TikTok <laughs> bingo, but I have no idea. So give me a word, Adam. What's a word you would hear at, at PD? Uh, fidelity. Okay. Ooh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll see your fidelity and I'll raise you <laughs> rigor. Oh. oh yeah. Melissa, what? <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh. Y'all put me on spot. I don't know. I can't think of. Bloodborne pathogen. No, no. <laughs> learning, yes. uh, learning loss. Learning, learning loss. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. All of those words, but it's like this. It is a. It's a trend on TikTok, and that blows my mind because that means that there are enough teachers across this this nation that are all sitting through the same sucky PD, and they know it, and their leaders know it, and no one's doing anything about it. We're just gonna yeah. do it again next year. Yeah, it didn't work this year, but wait till next year. Wait, it won't work again. What's, the, def- what's the definition of insanity? I think we just heard it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Teacher PD, that's what it is. Oh, yes. 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 Achieve, achievement that's gaps. Nice that's another word I would say. Achievement uh, gaps. That's another yeah. term. Oh, yes. yeah. well, let's and for the nice record, n- right not any PD that I go through in my district, uh, for the record. That's right. Uh, the, the, the neighboring districts, not mine. <laughs> Some of ours is kind of, uh, you know, icebreaker. <laughs> I'll give you an icebreaker and a candy bar and let's sit through this PowerPoint. That is just painful. <laughs> so, so let me ask you this as we kind of get, get to the end of this. I, we, we've all go through a lot in our profession. T- take, you can take COVID off the table. You can take the social unrest. You can take the board meetings that happen. Uh, take all that away. But in our jobs, we have a lot of things thrown at us. And so we often we try to ask our guest, how do you keep yourself from becoming undisrupted in this life that we live? Mm-hmm. I know Carl wants to jump out of an airplane uh, right. at some point. 
no. <laughs> No, that's that's not that's called keeping myself disrupted. I want to be undisrupted. Uh, Self care, yes, is a big one there. I think well, Jennifer and I we've known each other for over twenty years, so we have a, we we have the same mindset. We have the same mm-hmm. um, you know thoughts. We, I mean, our kids have grown up together, so um, our husbands work together. Is this the, it, the list goes on and on? But I feel like we are each other's sounding board. And so when we do get disrupted, we can, we can talk to each other. We have that. Um, yeah. And, you know, we have a favorite restaurant we like to go to. I think we took uh, Carl. Yeah. It was to, quite and, lovely. Yes. And, uh, and they knew we, them when they walked in. They said they shouted yeah. their names like, Norm, <laughs> <Hey>. cheers. <laughs> so I feel like, you know, sometimes just stepping away from, from work and stepping away from the negativity and, and finding a place just to go and, and, have that downtime and and then recharge um, and then jump back in the next day and you know and with a new plan you know I think that I think we're lucky because we do have that that sounding board and we have that relationship where you know we can it's not just the recharge we have a good enough relationship that she can say you are being crazy people are trying to tell you this and you're not listening you're not supposed to fix everything because i'm a fixer like tell me there's a problem i'm going to fix it as fast as i can and we have a good enough relationship where she can say you're being crazy right now they don't want you to fix it they just want you to listen to them so go to that campus sit down with those teachers keep your mouth shut and listen and Mm -hmm. i think you have to have someone in your life like that because that's the only thing that can get you out of that negative cycle sometimes is somebody being honest enough with you to say you know shut down your crazy keep your mouth shut and listen <laughs> and i do think you have to have that. do we need to drive around the block once or twice and we have done that before <laughs> we literally yeah. got to the office before just to take a drive around the block like we're gonna get for the schools. <laughs> right. It yeah. changes your mindset, just getting out of that office, uh-huh. uh, you know, sometimes the environment Absolutely. that you're in. I mean, I love that you guys took the staff out into like Waco and had, you know, don't, don't do PD just in the cafeteria every time, oh, you know, never. take, take them to never. a different experience, a different place. It changes their mindset. So it also it puts you all on an equal playing ground, which is why we, you know, we do the same with our leadership retreat. It, it's a destination style retreat too, because when you're all on it at a brand new place, and you're all experiencing something you've never experienced before. And no one has a title. No one is above you because you are all scared together. Right. You're all on the same playing field. Yep. Everybody. Especially if you know I've planned it because you don't know. Last year, we put our APs and principals on a train and didn't even tell them where they were going. I just told them how to drive. <laughs> a train to nowhere. They ended up in the stockyards. <laughs> they had no clue what was about to hit them. But it's it's. It's Have you seen Squid Games? games? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Riding the crazy yeah. train with uh, with Jennifer and Melissa, yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think we just came up with the title of the podcast. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I want to thank you all for joining us, guys. Be sure to check out uh, both Melissa and Jennifer on Twitter. And also check out their hashtag, Destination PD, uh, for some of those great experiences. You can see some great photos in there from years past, including this last year, with the giant dice and the Monopoly board. It looks amazing. Um, thank you. And thank you. And for all our listeners out there, be sure to subscribe and give us a review. We'd appreciate it. We might even give you a shout out on a future show. This has been the Undisrupted Podcast brought to you by Future Ready Schools. He's Adam and you can follow him at Ask Adam 3 And he's Carl and you can follow him at Mr. Hooker. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are better together. And we are better. Undisrupted. undisrupted.